Yeah. So you use the word um, selfishness. Yeah. Um, earlier. Um, and, and sometimes that word is intimately attached to another word. Uh, and, and that word is, is safety. Mm. Um, not safety from the sense of maybe physical danger, you know, kids at the parking lot, you know, trash there, but more of a sense of mm. emotional safety. Right. Mm. So if, if we embrace any new thing or even consider any new thing, it's going to take away our emotional safety. And for a lot of people, it's subconscious. So let's go back to the conversation we were having about the person that you were on the phone with after we finished the assessment. And their thing was, I don't want to feel like I'm blindsided. And I also want to feel like I am a part of what's happening. Mm -hmm. I want to feel like, you know, I'm walking in in lockstep with, with what's happening. And be, because if that doesn't happen, I feel like I'm losing my sense of identity or safety or comfort. So the, the whole idea that somebody just puts up a basketball hoop on a place where visually, even though that nobody's attending, I can drive by and have my emotional needs met because I see the building, this mm -hmm. basketball hoop is a threat to my emotional safety. Mm. And there's some, you know, how we are with our fears. Fears often yeah. cause us to be, you know, irrational. Uh, so let's let's take you personally in your journey. Mm. And if someone says to you, Kyle, let's try a new restaurant. Mm -hmm. All right, never been there before. You know, you can't even Google the thing. All right, you know, they don't have social media up. If they say, Kyle, let's try a new restaurant, what's yeah. your response going to be? Yeah, I don't know, man. What, what they, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what do they ask? <laughs> but Bailey, I don't know. Yeah. See, Bailey, I don't know. Now, yeah. even, even though, you know, you know the person who's offering to take, they'll say, hey, Kyle, okay, I'll pay for you. What is that going to change about your response? It's It's going to, it's going to, I mean... <laughs> I'm gonna say uh that I still wanna go somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What would make you pick that response? You're saying that I still wanna go somewhere else? Yeah. Because I know I know that I can get what I want somewhere else. I know that I like the food somewhere else. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't um, wanna be disappointed. What if I've been to the restaurant before? And I, I rave about the food and I can, I can, you know, describe for you the, the pleasant experience. The, the mm -hmm. servers are amazing. The food is great. I've been there before. And because of where I've been, you know, I'm making this recommendation to you. What, what's your response going to be? I would try it at that point. I would try it. But in the back of my mind, though, like I would be comparing it to the place that I really want to go to. Like everything that happened, oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> everything that happened at the restaurant, I would compare it to the the restaurant that I really want to go to. What do you mean? You see what I did there? <laughs> because you're, you're saying that that's kind of what they're doing, right? They they they've never been there, they've never seen it. And there's something there, concrete that they know uh, that has been there. It's been a staple. It's been something they could depend on, and me coming in saying, hey, let's do this, let's do that. The thing is saying, hey, let's go to this restaurant that I'm telling you about, but you've never been to. So so what would have to happen for you with you know your routine, the restaurants you love, the places that are cool for you? What would have to happen to convince you to, to go with the experience and be open, not to even just comparing, but be open to learning and seeing if this is something you want to add to your routine of restaurants. What would have to take place for you? Um, for me, there would have to be more, like more people would have to be down to go. And I'd be like, all right, I'm going to try it. Um, you know, I would need to, if this is just me and someone else, then, hey man, let me see that menu. Let me see what they got. You know, um, let me look up some reviews. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's so crazy, all of these, for just for me to try a new restaurant. Um, but yeah, th- those are some things for me. Like, it would either have to be, every, like, a ton of people are going. Like, all right, I want to be, I don't want to rock this shit. Let's go. Let me see what it's like. Um, or let me see the menu so I can at least identify some things on there. That, oh, that'd be cool. That's dope. Um, and then lastly, like, definitely want to look up some reviews. Let me hear what somebody else had to say about it as well. So when you think about all the things that you're looking to do uh, in your role as a congregational leader uh, of, of churches in Mississippi uh, with mm-hmm. their unique culture and mm-hmm. fabric, what would the menu look like, you know, for them to be able to consider yeah. what you want to offer? Yeah. It would look crazy. Like, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you're just taking my ideas and putting them on paper, it would look crazy. Um, and it's so wild because, you know, you're saying that and um, maybe you kind of look at everything different because I think up until this point, um, and, and I'm, I, you know, I say all this stuff, I've had like a lot of, we, we've done some, we've been able to do a lot of, a lot of great things here. Um, but, uh, when I think about just how I, there's, there's one thing in particular that I'm thinking about, like, man, uh, I actually did hand them a menu. Like if we just got the little, I handed them a menu for like a vision. I think it was my second year. And, uh, and they definitely looked at that thing like, what the heck is this? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah. And I was just saying that. Okay. That makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. So so consider that. What would it take for you? Because this was two two years ago uh, in, in, in one of your meetings. What would, what would it take for you uh, to come back or even every year and say, this is the menu of things that I'm thinking through 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 prayer, through study, through you know mentorship, through consultation with other congregational mm-hmm. leaders, this is this is kind of the picture of what I'm thinking uh, will be good for us to consider for our church. You know, and you know, here is kind of the menu because you know restaurants change change menus every so often. Yeah. Yeah. Out out of all of these options, mm-hmm. out of all of these choices, uh, which ones? do you feel feel Mm -hmm. would be the best for us to try what what would it take for you to present using that restaurant analogy what what would it take for you to present uh, things to them in that way i mean it would just i think it would take just more time more intentionality um you know what i'm saying like i think that that uh, I'd also it also would be uh, if we're just gonna be honest, it would be it would take a little bit more humbleness um, to be willing just to say like you know what, what do you guys feel? What do you guys you know try? You know what I'm saying? Because I think a lot of times um, when you have a vision of something and you know where you want to go, um, you kind of communicate it like that, right? Without if you're not intentional, you communicate it like, this is what we're doing. This is what we need to do. And there's really no, uh, or even if there is room for comments and questions, they just kind of get blown off because this is where we're trying to go. Um, so I think it would take, you know, just more intentionality, more time, uh, and, and definitely uh, more humility. What was most helpful about our conversation today? Um, man, the, the most the most helpful was um <laughs> just the way you painted the uh the 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 buy-in piece. Um, and we talked about it being more like uh you know a menu or you know you, you set up the scenario uh with uh you inviting me to a restaurant I've never been to, never heard about. Uh, never seen um, and my apprehension or the apprehension that would develop uh, because I've never been to it, never eaten there, never seen it, never heard of it. Um, and related that to being, you know, the, the members experience at my church when I'm standing up telling them, hey man, this is what I think we should do. 
Um, and uh, just making sure that like, I um, am very intentional about presenting things to them, understanding the context, understanding their personalities, um, understanding how different it is, um, and also understanding how <laughs> how unwilling I would be to try something new. Um, and just kind of using those as like the framework to um, put together something that is easy for them to um, understand and also then giving them the power to kind of figure out what they're comfortable with feeling or trying. Um, so yeah, that was the most important, uh, it, to me, uh, that was the most impactful part of uh, this conversation. <laughs> 